Good morning. So this morning I'd like to talk about why couples fight and why often the dream turns into a nightmare. But before that, I just want to remind people that the offer is still on the table uh, until the end of November. Uh, I, I have room to work with four more couples as uh, personally to coach them on their wellness journey. So if you're interested, give me a shout. 519-966-1408. 519-966-1408. So room for four more couples. Okay. So why do couples fight? Why do uh, often, why does the, the dream often uh, turn into a nightmare? And if you've ever asked these questions, you're not alone. These are the questions that Harville uh, Hendricks and his wife, Helen McKelly Hunt, struggled with uh, 40 years ago. They're the creators of Imago Relationship Therapy, and I think that their answer has cracked the code on relationships. I truly believe that. It's, it's like having the right combination to a lock. Once you know the combination, much easier to open the lock. Once you understand better why two people are together, it's much easier to deal with whatever issues arise. So they're, they're counterintuitive insight. It's counterintuitive because nobody in their conscious mind would, would, would partner with somebody who can't meet their needs just like they weren't met as, as a child. All right? But on another level, it does make sense because they're saying that we unconsciously are attracted to someone who has some of the similar positive but also negative traits of our early caregivers, which includes our parents, grandparents, uh, whoever, babysitters, whatever, siblings. At another level, it does make sense because you can't live with somebody for 18 years and not be influenced by them. All right? Um, and and for me, it it's a given that Harville and Helen have trained uh, 2,500 of us around the world in 53 countries over the last 40 years doing this work, Imago Relationship Therapy. I see it every day in my office, and, I, and I'm not alone. I tell my, my couples, I say, look, it, this is not just me. It, this has played out in thousands and thousands and thousands of offices around the world. They're on to something. Right? Once you understand that, then it gives you a choice. You can keep doing what you're doing, or now you have a choice to do things differently. And the, so the question is, what are you going to do about it? And I'm from Canada, and uh, I, I use the example of, um, of Terry Fox. Alfred Adler, uh, I trained as an Adlerian psychologist before I, I trained with Harville. And Alfred Adler uh, was a, a psychologist. He was a contemporary of Freud, but broke with Freud very early because they disagreed on many things. And he has this great saying, it's not what you possess, it's how you use it. And I, like I said, I'm from Canada, and I use the example of Terry Fox, a young man probably 40 years ago now, who lost a leg to cancer. His right leg was amputated. And he initiated what he called the Marathon of Hope. So he uh, attempted to, to run across Canada, some 9,000 kilometers, to raise money for cancer research. And he, he got over halfway, like something like 5,500 kilometers. And then the cancer came back, affected his lungs, and he died shortly after. But his legacy lives on. Every year, there, there's hundreds of Terry Fox runs to raise money for cancer research. And, and my point is, another young lad could, you know, lose a lady cancer and, and sit there and say, well, life's not fair. They both possess the same thing, but use it quite differently. And so with you. You possess your partner right now. Now, what you're going to do with that, that you, that you have more choice over. And, and, and so it's like having, it's, well, it is. It's like having the first digit of the combination lock, all right? That to understand that I'm, I am, in fact, partnered with somebody who, who probably can't meet my needs at the start. But if, if we can both stretch to meet each other's needs, then we really heal ourselves. We heal each other. Right? It's not as complicated as it seems. I, and I use myself as an example because for me, this is not just theory. It's, it's very uh, experiential. It's my experience. Because I grew up in a boarding school and certainly didn't learn how to deal with feelings very well. My wife uh, had an alcoholic dad when she was young and her legitimate feeling needs weren't met either. So who does she marry? Someone who can't meet those needs. But thanks to Imago Relationship Therapy, as we both became more conscious, and as I stretched to meet her needs in the feeling area, for example, then I also healed part of myself. That was something growing up. So it really is a win-win, all right? So their insight, Harlow and Helen's insight, is that you're probably partnered with somebody who's gonna activate some old stuff, all right? Now, what you decide to do with that, you have more choice over, all right? But once you come to grips with that fact, in fact, you, you've married your healer, but you're going to have to do things a little bit differently. 
all right? So for me, it's like having that first digit of the lock. There's, there's four more to go, but once you understand that, much better chance to do things a bit differently. Uh, you have a choice. You can grow to meet your partner's needs and therefore heal yourself, or you can keep fighting and arguing. Your choice. Okay? Now, if you have comments or questions or if this make, doesn't make any sense at all, just type in Imago in the comment section. I'll get back to you on Messenger and we can c c continue the, the conversation. All right? Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll carry on on Thursday or the second digit. Cheers.